Take a moment and look at this photo. That guy's hot. <laughs> he's confident, and he's making a difference in his life. But I didn't always be that. I wasn't always this person. I grew up in a small town in Alabama, about an hour and 15 minutes um, east of Birmingham toward Atlanta. Um, but if that person's driving, it's about 50 minutes. Um, uh, but I, so I grew up with a mom that was a seamstress, and uh, it was apparent to me right away that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to follow her footsteps. Um, I wanted to sew. I love buttons. I love needles. I love thread. Um, but growing up in Piedmont, Alabama, it wasn't allowed. Boys couldn't be seamstresses. Boys couldn't be designers. Um, boys couldn't take home ec classes. So my mom was the first one that told me that I couldn't go after my passion. Then it was my school that told me I could not take home ec classes, go in and sew pillows and pajamas, which was, I was really attracted to that idea, actually, back in the time. Um, so I would sneak out of biology classes, math classes, and I'd go to the other wing of the school, and, um, and I'd just peer into the door of the, um, of the girls um, sewing away, cooking, and making, um, making pajamas and making pillows, and I would fantasize <laughs> that that could be me. <laughs> But then the principal quickly came back and reminded me, that will never be you. <laughs> Get back to your biology class before I give you detention again, because I just saw you here last week. And what I wanted to tell him was, allow what moves you to move others. I don't care how many detentions I get. I'm going to be back here next week, peering through that window until I can get into that class. My idea is that all of us have the ability to change lives no matter what. And the way that we're gonna do that is finding what we're passionate about. I think that every single one of us are creative. I think that all of us have passion. But we live, unfortunately, in a world that tells us that this is what you have to do. You have to play by these rules. You have to go to school. You have to get this education, get a family, and then repeat that process. I didn't understand this process because I didn't like school, first of all. Um, but <laughs> I think it's very, very, very important. Um, but I, I wanted to sew. That's all I were, really wanted to do. And um, my mom had a sewing machine in her in her home. And I would literally play with the sewing machine when she wasn't there. But we had this carpet. And she would always realize when I was playing with the sewing machine, and she would come home, Boris, were you with my, were you in my sewing machine? It's like, no, mom. And she was like, oh, really? So then I would get a spanking. Okay, let's be real. I grew up in the South with a black mother. I would get a beating. <laughs> and she was like, sorry, you don't play the swing machine. This is only for girls, boys. I was like, oh, okay, mom. And then finally I realized at a certain point in my life that all I had to do is when she left, open up the door, play with the swing machine, close it, and brush the carpet, and she would never know. So this is how I realized that I can win over my mom and actually pursue what I was really passionate about and what I actually loved in life. Um, so then what I needed to do was figure out a way that I could express my creativity because I wasn't a happy person, because I wasn't able to be Boris. I wasn't able to go and, and seek and practice the happiest, what made me the happiest, which was um, my passion for fashion. I'm growing up in an area where I could not be myself so therefore, I'm not making a difference in the world. I'm not making you smile. I'm not making myself, myself smile. And I was given a talent that is beyond my recognition and my belief. And I feel it is unjust that I don't share what makes me happiest with everyone else. If we were all, as people, thank you, were able to express ourselves creatively, and find our passion and not be afraid to go after our passion, that this will be a much, much, much better and safer world. Because if you think about it, when you're passionate about what you do, you're happy. And when you're happy, you're excited to go do things, to make a difference. I get up every single day and I work seven days a week on an average 12 to 14 hours a day. It's never worked for me because I'm enjoying exactly what I do, what I love to do. I'm making a difference. And all that matters to me is to see someone wearing my piece and they contact me and they call me or they Facebook me and they were like, Boris, I felt like a queen or a prince when I was wearing your piece. I got so many compliments 
And that right there does everything that everything for me. And it and it just it tells me that I am I'm one of those really fortunate ones. And I'm glad that I took all of those beatings growing up in the South. I'm glad I was picked on and, um, and, and I persevered all of this because that's all that makes a difference right now for me is to make sure that I'm expressing myself very passionately and that I can actually encourage other people to be passionate about what they do as well. Again, that's the only thing that I think is going to make this world a better place is if we're all expressing ourselves in a very passionate way. So I encourage you very all, I encourage all of you to go after what you're passionate for. Live the dream. Don't be afraid to fantasize. It's not just for children anymore. We all should fantasize. We all should love. Fall in love many a times. First start by loving yourself and not being afraid to be yourself. And after you fall in love, find passion. Be passionate about something every single day of your life. And as she said, I, you know, I, I moved here. I finally like um, left Alabama to go searching for myself. And um, I knew that if I stayed there, that I, I just would not be a, a really good, healthy person and I'm not gonna be making a difference in the world. So I got into um, music because this was the only way that I could express myself um, creatively in Alabama. Um, and music would allow me to tra start traveling the world. So I started traveling, looking for myself and finding myself, and I landed here in Chicago in 1995. And I was marching with an organization and that's when I met my first fashion designer. Michael came into the room. He was tr uh, fitting us for our costumes. And uh, he said, um, Boris, okay, this is what you're gonna be wearing this season, blah, 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 I took all of my measurements. And I ended up staying there with him for the whole entire rest of the day. To the point where my coach came and was like, Boris, get your butt back to rehearsal. But this guy made a difference in my life. And that was when I first realized that I am supposed to be a designer. Growing up in Alabama, I didn't know where clothes came from. I thought everything came from J.C. Penney's. It all made sense to me here in Chicago. So therefore, I packed up my mom's car. I drove here to Chicago, planted myself here in 1997 to pursue a career in fashion design. Little did I know that when I left Alabama, I was paying about $98 for rent for a month. <laughs> Come to Chicago, as we know, it was about my first apartment was like $5. $50, $600 a month. So I found myself working odd in jobs just to pay the bills and make your rent work. I couldn't afford to go to school at the time. So I was like, well, what am I gonna do? How am I going to continue to be very passionate about what I do and make a difference in everyone else's life? Make a difference in my own life, basically. So what I did was I decided to get into retail. Because if I got into retail, this way I could at least learn how to manage people. My goal was to go in to figure out where the clothes were being made, how they're being cut, where the labels are coming from, and, uh, and, and then learning that process on the inside because I already knew that I was creative. And I knew I was very passionate about it. And I knew I wasn't gonna give up. and I was gonna make it work for myself. So I worked in retail for about 10 years, just learning the trade, meeting the right people, going to the industry meetings. And then after five years, I realized that that's not the part of fashion that I, that I resonate with. That's not who Boris Paul is. Boris Paul is an inspiring designer. Boris Paul wants to make clothing. Boris Paul wants to make the world beautiful through fabrics. And, and I can tell you, I'm looking at all these drapes here with all this fabric, and I'm just like, that can make a lot of dresses. <laughs> I, like, I just want to go back there and wrap all of us in this fabric right here. I tell you, I just, so I just had to like get that out of the way because I've been staring at this for the whole entire time. But uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, I live through you guys. I, I really do. And um, I want you to know that um, how you appear makes a difference, not only in my life, but it makes a difference in everyone else's life. I'm going to do a quick little exercise with you guys. Look to your neighbor, to the left and to the right. Notice how they're wearing what they're wearing. Notice their hair, notice the makeup. You're judging. <laughs> but it's okay because right now I just gave you the permission to it, so it's excused. But you all have a profound way of how I feel. You set my mood, you set your own moods, because at the end of the day, we are very visual people. It's a law of attraction. 
We can't help it. This is who we are by nature. So when I look at you as an audience, or when I'm out and about, I am moved every single day of my moment, every moment of my day, by what you're, what you're wearing. And I honestly think that so is everyone else. So I want to encourage you to be very mindful of how you're putting yourself together and how you're presenting yourself when you're out and about. Because you're making a difference in someone's life. And this is all I ever wanted to do, was make a difference in someone's life and beautify the whole entire world. I don't know who I'm touching and when I'm touching, but I do believe that we all touch so many different people, whether we realize it at the moment or we don't realize it. So be very mindful of the power that you have. I will, I was in Tennessee actually a few weeks ago and I was out shopping with some friends and um, I actually saw this lady and she was just out shopping in the middle of the day and she had a full face of makeup on and she was dressed to the nines and she was at World Market. I went to this woman and I was like, you know what, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I have to tell you that you are fabulous today. And she's like, oh, well, thank you. And I was like, I, uh, again, I'm a fashion designer. I'm out of Chicago, but I love to see when people get dressed up and they dress to the nines because they are, they're, they're showing that they care about something and they're very passionate about something. Anyone can just put a suit on like this, you know. This is, this is the old Morris Powell. When I, you know, before I realized who I was and before I actually started to accept my passion and said I'm going to make a difference. And uh, she looked back at me and she was like, you know what, honey? I don't walk out the house to get my mail without a full face of makeup on. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Because you care about the difference that you're making in someone else's life. You have no idea when it's going to happen. So be very, very, very mindful uh, of, of how you're, you know, you're presenting yourself when you go out and about. Um, one of the th things that I know that I'm doing the right thing in my life is um, because I found my passion. I'm not afraid of it anymore. And I, and I go for it seven days a week. And no matter what anyone else is telling me, starting with my mom or my school, I'm always going to do exactly what I'm passionate about. And because of that, you know, I'm cursed. I'm cursed by what makes me me. I love all things beautiful. I can't help it. I've always been this way. It started with my mom, dressing my mom at certain times of um, in our lives and things like this. I see what I create in my dreams. That's why I know that I'm doing the right thing. And no matter what, I'm gonna wake up every single day inspired to create beauty, inspired to make a difference, inspired to make your life absolutely a lot more glamorous than it can ever, ever, ever be without you accepting my creativity and accepting your passion and your creativity as well. But now, you know, I say, when I say that I, I'm haunted by the, the very thing that makes me is I don't sleep much because when I say I dream, I dream big, but I've never not dreamt big. I fantasize all my whole entire life and I love these fantasies. I think it keeps me who I am right now and it keeps me very, very, very passionate about life. So. I sleep on an average, and I've been sleeping like this for eight years, five hours a night. And remember, I work seven days a week, and in those five hours a night, I am probably up at least three times because of what I see. It's so vivid, and it's so strong to me. And at one point, I was like, I cannot do this. I need my sleep. I cannot sleep. Now I accept it because it's who I am, and it's the only way that I can continue on and create beautiful magic, magic things, actually. So now I, I, I live within my dreams. Why wouldn't I? It's a very beautiful and creative place. And I go there every single night and I look forward to going there every single night. Passion has no color. Passion has no gender. And passion has no expiration. Thank God. Because I am probably 165 years old. But because I do exactly what I love to do and I'm very passionate about it, you can never tell that in the movement moisturizer as well. But <laughs> the key is you have to find your passion. It's never too late. And it's never, ever, ever not really close within your soul. I started this six years ago. Full time, three and a half years. I've been a designer now full time after leaving my career of 10 years, only three and a half years. And like they say, I have dressed a Grammy nominee, Ralph Rosario, who was up um, for a Grammy two years ago. Nat King Cole's, Natalie Cole's daughter, owns one of my signature red dresses. Patti LaBelle has one of my jackets. Juliana Ranzik has one of my scarves. Elle McPherson has two of my tops, one of my scarves. Um, 
Um, let's see, um, Niall Barger, um, noted fashion photographer, photographer um, on America's Next Top Model. His wife now has one of my new clutches, a lipstick that I just launched last week, um, last month, and one of my scarves as well. And that's because I'm not afraid to dream. I dream big. Years ago, I told myself that I wanted to have a dress at the Oscars, and I wanted to dress the stars. And now, the Boris Paul that came where people told me that I could not make a difference by being a seamstress. I couldn't be a seamstress. Boys were not allowed to sew. Boys cannot be creative. So I hid behind so much, and I lost so much of my life. And about three and a half years ago, I was like, I'm gonna do exactly what I wanna do. I'm gonna be Boris Powell. I couldn't sew back then, but now I sew. Now I'll make a difference. I have all these phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal clients. And I am now, no peeking, no peeking. I think it's funny how when you shoot for the stars, you get there. I was Boris Paul that was hiding behind his strings in his passion. Now I'm the Boris Paul that has an extensive list of celebrities. I wake up doing exactly what I want to do every single day, which is making a difference in every single person's life. I smile at people, no matter what kind of mood I'm in, because you don't know when you're changing someone's life. If I can't make you beautiful, I'm gonna make you smile. So don't be afraid to move others which what moves, with what moves you. Go out, make a difference, find your passion. It's never too late. Thank you, guys. Yeah.